This is One on One. Steve Adubato here at the Healthcare Foundation in New Jersey. We're doing a forum in just a few minutes um, on breaking the cycle of abuse, of bullying, particularly dealing with teens. And we're joined by one of the folks who will be joining us, Lauren Hirsch, National Director of World Without Exploitation and Teen Online Safety Expert. Uh, describe your organization, World Without Exploitation. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. Our pleasure. Um, we are a national coalition designed to combat human trafficking and sexual exploitation. We work on a lot of different fronts, policy, changing legislation, and getting into the community and really changing hearts and minds on these issues. I'm, cu I'm curious about this. Connect the work that you're doing, the victims that you deal with every day, and bullying and abuse. They are your quintessential victims of bullying and abuse. We see that where there's vulnerability, that people tend to be victimized in exploitation, in um, online dating violence, and, and they're really the people we want to make sure that we're having clear and raw conversations with and preventing this where we can. Online, you refer to online dating violence. Describe it for folks. What does it look like? Well, we're seeing more and more as things shift from the streets to online, we are seeing all of the sort of the quintessential things that we see in um, dating violence power, control, issues of isolation, jealousy, verbal abuse. Mm. It's really translating online, and it's happening in lots of different ways. It's happening, we see significant others who are using uh, online platforms to hack and track their victims. To hack and track their victims. Yeah. As, a, as a mechanism to control. So you have a person who um, who is looking to control their significant other, and they're getting um, they're getting passwords, mm. and they're going online, and they're looking at where that person is at all times to really exert tremendous control. Uh, we're seeing a lot of humiliation happening online, so that significant other may go online and may pose as their partner and may reveal private mm. information that, 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 that's really designed to humiliate and embarrass. But, well, let me ask you this. Um, I'm curious, for parents who obviously watching right now worried, concerned, want to be helpful, want to be part of the effort to protect their own children first, others later, given the fact that so much online activity takes place without a parent, regardless of how mm -hmm. much he or she is committed to um, parenting, good parenting, so much of that online activity takes place without the parent's awareness. Your advice? I think it's really important to crack open real and raw conversations with young people. How difficult I are these conversations? I what do they sound like? I think it's as simple as understanding where your kids are and what they're doing and trying to be a part of their lives and, and doing it in a way where we're not just probing but we're really opening ourselves up to listen to what young people have to say in the most non-judgmental way possible. Let me push back a little bit. Very often you get from teens, why are you prying so much? Everything's fine. Leave me alone. If I had a problem, I'd tell you. We can't accept that. I, I, don't, I actually think that it, it kind of depends on the way we're framing the conversations with young people. So I think a great way in is not to pry about that person in particular, but like, where are your friends? What are they doing? Mm. Do you feel like your friends are in healthy relationships? What, is, what do those healthy relationships look like? And, and in the event that, that your friend is in an unhealthy relationship, what are things that you can do? And I think that opening those conversations in a way that's not necessarily about that kid, but about her friends and empowering that young person, or his. or his, absolutely. I say her, but absolutely, right. we're talking about really the spectrum on gender. And by the way, the part of our conversation about breaking the cycle of abuse and bullying deals with the transgender mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. We'll deal with that in the forum as well, but yeah. I'm curious about this. Why did you get so committed and involved? Why are you so committed and involved to this movement, this cause? I mean, for a whole host of reasons. I think that if we are going to make a drastic difference in um, 
in our society and we need change, the best place to start is by having these sorts of conversations with young people. I think, I think when we do, young people want to have these honest conversations. They, they do. want to have the tough conversations. They want to have them. I think they do. I think it depends on how you frame those conversations, but I think that if you go in and you do a lot of listening, I think young people are hungry to talk. I'm curious about this. I don't know whether this helped, hurt, I don't know what the impact is, but I often ask, ourselves, my, ask myself as a member of the media what role we have to play in this. And I wound up watching a, um, a series that I know you're familiar with, the Dirty John series. And I'm not going to advocate you should see it or you shouldn't see it. But I thought to myself, this guy, right? Um, and people, you Google him, you find out who he is. I'm not going to promote the story anymore. He did many of the same things that you're describing to a woman who was in her early 50s. Mm -hmm. Is it different for a 15-year-old being bullied, being abused, being treated in a certain way in an online dating situation versus... Um, a middle-aged woman. I mean, I think it's you a really, know the series I'm talking about. I, I think it's a really good question. I think it's a really, I think it's a really important Couldn't question. Couldn't tell whether it helped or not. Yeah, well, so you're asking a couple of different Go questions, ahead, right? So what what I'm hearing you ask is, what's the media role here? Yeah, what is, is our role? Is, is, is it, it to do a docudrama and say, there it is, watch this, that's the problem? I mean, I think that the media is so essential in telling these stories. As long as the media is telling these stories in an honest, objective way where we're really listening to the voices of survivors and of other people who are impacted by these issues. And there's no so, need to sensationalize, is there? I don't think it's, there is. It's powerful enough. I think that sensationalizing it actually can be really harmful. You asked another question that I actually do want to answer, sure. which is about a 50-year-old versus a 15-year-old. Sure. I don't think we should just be talking about young people and violence. I think it can be actually really detrimental because I think that we're all, especially in this moment in time where online access is everywhere and, um, and online issues are really pervasive, I think we're seeing damage being done to not just young people, mm. but adults as well. Now the difference here is that when you're dealing with a young person, there's often a tremendous amount of trust, right. and there's also a tremendous amount of vulnerability. So I think that it's, while it's really important to have these conversations about everybody, I, I do think that there's really significant value in getting in and having these conversations with the young people. Lauren, you're making a difference every day, and I thank you for joining us, not just in this interview, but for the forum we're having here at the Healthcare Foundation on breaking the cycle of abuse and uh, bullying. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Northward Center, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, PSENG, TD Bank, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, Berkeley College, and by the Fidelco Group. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and AM970 The Answer. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.